So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get as many uh, ex or current high school basketball players to come on, talk about, you know, their experience, high school basketball. You know what I'm saying? Just to try to tie it in with everybody. Because, you know, every basketball, when I was, when I used to play ball, one thing a coach always used to tell me was, one thing about basketball is everybody has a story. You know what I'm saying? Your story is real important to the next person or a person coming up under you. So, you know, stuff like that is very important to the to the young kids that's coming up. Um, so we're going we gonna to chop it up. The first first episode, I, I felt like I had to do my brother, you know what I'm saying? Because he has a, a real interesting story when it comes to basketball. So, you know, I'm going to have him come on. We're going to discuss a little bit. We're going to have some jokes, you know, laugh a little bit and see what's going on. We're going to take some questions from the chat. So if you're in the chat, make sure you drop your question. I'm going to I'm going to ask him your question. So just let me know. All right, so look, make sure y'all drop your questions in the chat. I'm definitely going to ask my brother some of the questions that y'all ask. But for the first person we got coming on today, we got my brother Pierre Forte from PF Workouts. He's going to discuss his high school basketball career, his story. Talk about more so talk about his story, you know, ups and downs of it, and you know uh, how it got him to where he's at now and stuff like that. Also, if you got some some people that you want to see come on, you got any recommendations? Let me know. DM them to me. All right, so listen, y'all. Listen, time. man. Finally, we got my brother in here, Pierre Forte from PF Workouts. Uh, he's our first guest on the Basketball Tells podcast, man. <laughs> so, first of all, man, tell him about you. Tell him, you know, tell him who you are, what you do, where you from, and then we're gonna get into your backstory. All right. So, I mean, obviously, um, I'm from Philadelphia, and um, Claude is my brother. Um, I have a business called PF Workouts Academy. That's that's my, my whole niche as far as, like, working with kids. Um, a lot of people don't know that I, um, I'm i also a you know, student of the school district, so I work with kids all day, um, not just not just on a basketball level, on a social, emotional, and um, mental uh, level. So I think that's something that people that – don't know me don't probably know so um that's that's really the gist i mean as we go along um as far as introducing everything else you guys get more all right so um you know high school basketball we, we get right into it. high school basketball um it's a little different now than what it is let's talk it's a little different now than what it is back when when we was you know in, in, in <laughs> the alleyways, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You was you was cooking mm-hmm. me and all that, and, right. you know what I'm saying. You know, we wire. War. Shooting you know, on wire. wire, niggas won't even believe that. But you know, check wire. this out, right? <laughs> um, I really want to um break into like, so let's start with ninth grade, year one, like when you first started playing basketball. All right, so talk about year one when you first got into that. So, so when my first year playing, really exposing myself to basketball. Um, prior to it, it was just something that was for fun. I didn't really like my. Uh, a lot of my friends were doing it. My older brother was doing it, and uh, I was like something that I thought was fun at first. And then um, my first time trying out for our school, I didn't make the, the team. So that was something that kind of drove me to, like figure out know how much better I can get so that I could make the team. So my ultimate goal first and foremost was for my for my sophomore year was to make the team my next year. Uh, so if you didn't make the team um for your high school back then, you just didn't make the team. It wasn't no J V. It wasn't no, no such thing as that. So if you didn't make varsity, you just didn't make varsity. And then uh, a little bit long along the line, a little bit along the way, then they started to add J V and um freshman team and all. we didn't have a freshman team. We didn't have a J- JV team, none of that stuff. So when you were going up against the varsity guys, you eighth grade coming into ninth grade, you it was if you either was good enough or you wasn't. And it wasn't no gray area to it. It wasn't no um, constellation to be on the bench or sit on the bench because most of the guys that were playing on the high school team, they either were getting in the game or you just weren't getting in at all. Okay, okay. So let's talk about uh, um, let's talk about the, and let's let's, let's that, talk about the talent level. And let's talk about when, the talent so even level. Even if you did make the team. So what what, right, what right. was the ta- what was the talent level like when you was in ninth grade? Like what like what type of caliber of players like, were you playing? As far as like when you coming in as a freshman, right? Because a lot uh-huh. of freshmen think they should come in and start. That's why I wanted to address this real quick, Clark. So a lot of the times when around the time we were playing, the freshmen didn't play, 
at all. You didn't get no minutes. It didn't matter how good you were. It was just a thing where the upperclassmen just pump all as far as like playing playing time and stuff like that. Um, as far as playing competition, we played in Division C. So um, Division C at the time was the best division that you could play in in Philly. So um, MOTEP, um, at, th- at this time, um, these schools were good that were dominant. Uh, Prep Charter, Delaware Valley, Freire, um, Vare. I mean, Vox. I'm not. I'm sorry, not not Vare, but Vox. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple other schools. Saul. Um, there were some other schools in there um, that I'm, I didn't mention. Uh, Strawberry Mansion. Strawberry Mansion was a powerhouse at the time. Um, these schools, these schools really had guys where um, their top eight guys were D1. Most of them. So we, it wasn't no, we weren't playing against any scrubs or nothing like that. Um, okay. Yeah, that's, that's how that went. Okay. So, all right, so now let's get into uh, 10th grade. So 10th grade year, um, that's that's when I first started playing basketball. That's when um, <laughs> all I could do was shoot the basketball. That was about it. But mm-hmm. um, just watching the growth from 9th grade to 10th grade. Also, um, we didn't even touch on – uh, you started as a football player, right? Started yeah, off football, yeah. then he broke into basketball. So um, I still remember I was uh, I was at the school uh, with a couple of my friends, and I think y'all played in a French Central tournament or something like that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I forgot yeah. who the school was that y'all beat, but it was it was crazy because uh, Mariana, Mariana Brissetti. All right, this when they were Brissetti. They All had right, the so seven footer. So I still remember that very next day we woke up and you was like going crazy in the crib he had got right. that was like your first article written on you and it was right, something like right. i called him the haitian sensation and all this crazy yeah, shit. Yeah. so, so um, the first one was uh was purely from um tessa larry so this is before um mm-hmm. all that youtube video stuff that a lot of the kids get now tessa larry was a staple in um philly basketball this is when you the only way you could check someone's stats and stuff you had to go in the newspaper and look at everybody's stats. Like that's what. Like every week when we would have games, we had to go in the newspaper. We would see who who put up what numbers and all that. So that it, that's how we kept up with it. We didn't have videos, video footage of anybody playing or anything like that. We had to just look go based off of the box score basically. So that was our scouting. Right. Okay. So um. All right. So let's talk about um. The transition from tenth grade. So 11th grade, what were some of the things that you were doing to, to elevate wait, wait, the game so, to get better? So, so before we talk about the transition from 10th to, to 11th, let me talk about the 9th to 10th because that was that was key to what happened from 10th to 11th. So mm-hmm. the transition from 9th to 10th, um, after not making the team, uh, I just went crazy. Um, I want to give a shout-out to uh, Chris Klahar. Uh, he actively right now is an assistant um, coach at West Catholic. Um, he was our neighbor. And um, he really, like, put me under his wing, and that's when I really started to get into basketball. This is before we knew what training was. And all we did all we did was simple. We just went down to the Park Rose Playground. That was our, that was our stomping grounds. Mm-hmm. And we ran the hills. And we didn't really do any drills. We just played basketball. Like, a lot of – we just played a lot of basketball to get – like, that was your playing time. Like, playing playing at the park was your playing time. And that's where you kind of put your skills to the test against some some really good talent. Um, I played a lot. I played against a lot of old heads, a lot of older guys. That's how I got better from that year. From um, I went from not like guys not wanting you to be on their team or not picking. You know how you go to the gym and uh, the first the, the people go captain, everybody go captain, and they pick up their five, and you be that boy. You just not you didn't get picked at all. I went from being that guy that wasn't getting picked at all to uh, somebody that was just you know constantly getting picked, whether it was first, second, third. Um, and then what happened for my 10th grade year, um, I, I ended up averaging around somewhere around like 10 points a game. So I went from averaging zero, not making the team to averaging 10 points a game. So that's a, actually a really big leap from, uh, from a point standpoint, especially if you're someone that's starting off late, um, not playing basketball. So, so especially if you're not training. So speak about how, how hard it was to, um, to score back then, like. It so, wasn't easy so to score back then, guys. I'm telling you. So, I, so I'll never forget. Uh, we played Glenn Mills. It was a Glenn Mills tournament. I'll never forget this. And we, Strawberry Mansion was in the tournament. Glenn Mills was the they won. Uh, Glenn Mills and Strawberry Mansion they would flip flop as far as who would win it every year. Um, 
And what was the other school? Central was in it too. Back this is back when Central was uh, a select school. Um, they actually were pretty good at basketball. They had a pretty good basketball team. They weren't the best, but they had a pretty good basketball team. They were Division B at the time. Uh, division C, our division was the best division, hands down. Uh, back when I was two thousand, from two thousand and seven all the way to two thousand and ten, Division C we definitely ran the club. Um, so it was hard because guys, you actually had guys that were big men like that. They were there to block shots. Um, guys that were six, ten, six, eight weren't shooting threes. Like they literally that's were sitting in the paint. That's, and, that's and, what I was going to say. So like traditionally, saying? traditionally, how many yeah. six, eight, well, I'll, I'll say six, 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 eight, six, nine guys were, were on the wing. You feel me? Like how many? Like if you can. I, I want to say, I want to say I probably the tallest. The tallest person I saw on the wing was his name was Giddy. He played at Penn Chart, uh, Prep Charter. He was about six five, but he was a point guard. He was, he was really the only one of the only ones that I uh, rest in peace. By the way, too, um, he was really one of the only. He was kind of like a traditional big point guard back then. We didn't. There really wasn't a, a such thing as a big point guard. Every every uh, team for the most part had a small point guard. Like um, if you guys look at Motep. Even now, they always they love small point guards. Um, every team had a small point guard. Nobody had a big point guard or nothing like that. It just traditionally, it just wasn't a thing. Um, and like I said, the big men back then, literally six ten, seven foot, they weren't leaving the paint. If you drove, you were getting your shot blocked. If you didn't have a floater in your game, or you didn't have a, a pull up jump shot, or you couldn't shoot the ball. You couldn't you couldn't make it playing in uh, high school it's basketball funny. in Philly. Back it's then. funny because. Uh, um... I'm, no, I'm maybe I'm tripping, but back then people wasn't really doing floaters like that. Like I feel like floaters started with. We weren't doing floaters. Yep. Shout, shout out to uh, what's my boy name from Bartram? Uh, uh, Ty Garland. I think he was probably Ty Garland. Uh, yeah. Ty Garland, uh, uh, Duat, some of the first people I seen do floaters. He was one of the engineers. Yeah. All right, so all right, yeah, so let's yep. get into the big year, right? Let's get into the big year. Let's get into the big year. Eleventh grade right. year. This was this was my ninth. This was my first year in high school. I was a freshman. I sat on the bench my whole freshman year um, and, and just soaked in a lot of information and just really studied the game. You know what I'm saying? I got the privilege of watching you play um, that one year. Um, I actually was on the bench when he scored 43 points. We'll get into that, though. Um, so just talk about that 11th grade leap because it definitely something, something was different from 11th grade and 10th and 9th grade. Like, what, what would you attest that to? I want to – so basically from my 10th to 11th grade year that summer, I, I saw how much better I got from my 9th to 10th grade year. And um, I just started to play – I started to play a lot. Like I started to – like I said, back then, training really wasn't a thing. I didn't have nobody else that was training me really for real, for real. But um, Chris would take me to like play at Rutgers camps and play against some of the college guys. Like I really got better from playing against older guys. That's all I did straight up. Um, I think a lot of times we make too much out of training sometimes. But you learn a lot from your failures. I used to struggle a lot playing against the college guys because they were really, you know, they had a lot of experience. So, but I was able to keep up with them. And what ha what ended up happening was my game transitioned from playing against them to when I went to play against guys that were my age. So it just made it a little bit easier when I went and played guys my age. Um, and a lot of the times, I didn't even know that I was playing so well. I just was playing as hard as I could. Um, uh, speaking of like one of the games, I, one of uh, my second career high, my my senior year started to jump too far ahead. My senior year, I had thirty six. I but most of the times, if I scored thirty or more, I didn't even know I scored thirty or more. I never knew. I just was playing as hard as yeah, I could. Listen, I, listen, I swear to God, till to, till to, to this till this day, I still don't believe you scored forty three points that day. I, uh, right. I'm not trying to hate. So I, I did, it was just it happened so <laughs> quick. I guess. But, it was so fast, I still remember yeah. at the end of the yeah. game. I forgot who did our books around that time, but he came up to me. He's like, yo, he's like, yo, P, P had 43. I said, no, the fuck he did. Then he yeah, started showing right. me the numbers. I'm like, oh, man, that's crazy, man. But, but yeah, all, like that, that was a big year. So before we go further, I want to, I want to bring this up. I want, I just want to show this. I'm going to share the screen real fast. Yeah. Um, I'm going to share the screen real fast. I want, I want everybody to see this. All right. So as you can see, right. Um, Division C, one of the one of one, I would say one of the toughest divisions because they had all the top schools in there, like Lamberton, uh, well, 
Lamberton wasn't a top school, but you know, <laughs> we were in the we, top we, division, but we weren't we the top. in the top division. <laughs> we had prep charters, Delval, Vox, Mansion, even Free Area was tough back then. So mm-hmm. the the thing that stick out to me on this scoring sheet is two of the top scorers um, played for Lamberton, and the second mm-hmm. thing that sticks out to me is uh, the amount of games that was played thirteen games. Mm-hmm. That's that's probably what stands out to me the most. Nowadays, you know, these kids are playing uh what uh North for thirty games. Anyway. They're playing close for thirty games. Right. Okay, so and high school. So if you if you guys can see this list, man, it's a lot of names on here. Um if you see a name you know, put him in the chat. But uh you know, we got Devontae, we got we got DJ Newbell. People don't know too much about Andy Busuno, but he was one of yeah. the top scorers back then. Yeah. Little dude from Esperanza. Little dude scoring. We got Sheen, uh, Zafir, Octavius. But like I said, um, so speak about, you know, being the top two scorer in a division uh, full of dudes that went D1. I mean, this whole list right, right here is so, D1. But I want to say, so I want to say, first and foremost, that whole division C list, all D1 players, straight up D1 players. Some guys, some guys were even D1 off the bench. That's how, that's how great. So I think that, um, the, the the fact that that we only played thirteen games, um, that says a lot because you really don't have that much room for error to make a mistake or anything. Like you had to treat every game like it was really your last game. Um, and like I said, a lot of these guys that you guys, a lot of these names that you guys see on this list, most of them, majority, I want to say ninety percent of them were D one players, and if they weren't, they were D two. Um, the and so stick out to me the most is Ferg Myrick. I don't think Ferg Myrick. Yeah. So, yeah. This, if y'all could, if you're in the chat, just uh, copy and paste that name for me, and uh, go look that name. Kirk he, was a, he was he was a uh, problem. The, the one the one that stand out the most to me is uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say DJ Newbill because of how high he went D1. Like he played on the highest stage. You get what I'm right, saying? Right, like right, right. I want to say right? out of every yeah, Tennessee. I want to say out of everybody on this list. At last that most guys, most of these guys went all D1, but. Um, even guys that didn't make this list still went D one. I want to say that too. There's guys that's not on the scoring list. The average less than ten points a game. They went Division one. Um, somebody by the in the way. chat asked me, uh, "Do you know somebody named Don Feaster?" Don Feaster. I've I've heard of his name. He um, but did he play in the pub? I think so. Yeah. What school do you? I gotta know. I gotta know what school. You, this, the name sounds familiar though. Okay, hey, Don Feaster. All right. Um. Uh. Oh, what about Sam Prescott? That's the name I see that, that sticks out. Sam Prescott. Sam, Sam Prescott. Prescott was tough. Sam Prescott went to um, officer his first year, mm-hmm. and then uh, I think he ended up going somewhere else after that. But like I said, most of these guys, uh, Earl Brown, shout out to Earl Brown at Freary. At the yeah, time, he was at Freary. And Earl he Brown. played division. If y'all know who Earl Brown uh, is, Francis. it's Alphas uh, Only. Alphas Only. That's my guy. Yeah, that's Make my sure guy. Make sure y'all tap into him, Alphas Only. And I, and I want y'all to pay attention to another thing on here. Um, this team called uh, – this school that's called Sarah, uh, Sean, mm-hmm. you see uh, Sean Washington, Deion Latham. Um, what's, what's, what's the other one? Damn, Romare Garner. Uh, these were guys that were like low D1, high D2 players. That's the team that I scored 43 on. So I didn't sc- – Okay. Scored 43 three points on like scrubs or anything like that. Like I actually played against guys, and um, my brother can attest to this because he actually. Yeah, I was I was there. I was I was on the bench. Uh, so, but but it. wait, but wait. When um when the game started, um, because we are we going to jump into that? You want to jump into it? Yeah, you want to wait? Because <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I was say we could jump into it because uh we we gonna roll right in the twelfth grade right after this. We gonna roll into that yeah. summer. So so ahead, so what ended up. It. What ended up happening, which was the highlight of the year, I'm going to tell you guys why it was the highlight of the year. It wasn't even about the 43 points. It was how I scored the 43 points that was so crazy. And um, uh, one of the players, um, not one of the players, but one of the – someone in the crowd was like, for us to win, I would have to have 50 points. And it's crazy because we lost about six, I want to say. And if I would have had 50, we would have won the game. Um, but – it was the one thing that uh, – this is the way I got uh, – uh, my first time getting interest from the school was East Charlesburg. And um, the thing that they liked about it the most was the efficiency. So 
Yes, I scored 43 points, but I didn't shoot 40 shots. I didn't shoot 30 shots. I only shot 20 shots. Uh, I, I, I shot 20 shots. I made 14 out of 20. Uh, I had 11 free throws. I had like eight steals or something like that. So it was like an all-around game. Wait, hold on. I just, uh, that. I just, I just was yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the article is there, so it's it's stamped. It ain't. I ain't sitting here making up numbers and lying. These are all things that if you guys go Google it, it's on there, <laughs> like for sure. One second, I'm gonna tell you what you shot. Uh, 14 for 21 from the floor, six for 12 Ooh. from trays, nine for 11 from the line, 20 points in the fourth quarter. 20 points in the fourth quarter, eight minute quarters, by the way. And we, and we lost and 80, 80 to 74 is what we lost by. Yeah, by six points. And and I want to say this: by the time halftime came, I was getting double teamed because uh, our best player got suspended for that game. Yeah. Jamal so by, by the time by the time uh halftime came, I was getting double teamed. I ended up scoring twenty, getting double teamed in the fourth quarter. Right. So imagine scoring twenty points a game, but scoring twenty in one quarter, eight minute quarters, and you got people double teaming you all game. So that says a lot about like my ability and how much better I got from um my junior year. Ah, uh, shout my out to Chris Clar. My man Chris Clahar is in the building, y'all. We got Chris, Chris in the building. Chris, we already gave you a shout out. We got man, you, we gonna we gonna give always... Chris's flowers again, man. If it wasn't for Chris, I probably wouldn't have went to I college. Would. He probably wouldn't wait, went I'm to college. Guy. Yeah, wait. Let me say. Can we say? Can I say something real quick? But so so chat. When uh, this is what happened. I, I was playing football for Orbrook High School, and Chris going to laugh at this. Uh, I was playing football. I was walking to practice, literally walking to practice. I had my helmet. I had my football cleats on. I had all my stuff on. My pads and everything. He drove past me and saw me um, walking with my football gear on, picked me up and, and took me to a basketball game. And ever since then, we never we never really stopped. So yeah. shout out to Chris Lahar for uh, really yeah. putting us on and really showing us the ropes and everything. And yeah. it was days where um, I'm pretty sure he could have been doing something else, but he took a lot of time to work like work with us. This is like said, this was before trainers and all that stuff. We literally was yeah. just getting in genuine work. Yeah. And just kind of like really just wanted to help us. He saw two kids that were looking to do something with basketball and just wanted to genuinely help us for free. Yeah, not, and never, not just us though. Never, we, um, never. Our friends, we had friends that wanted to play. He, yeah. he come along. Yeah, he wanted to do it. So. And I want to say this too. He never, never, not one time, like he asked me for $10, 5 20 He really was genuinely just doing it because he cared about kids and wanting to work with kids. So, and he's a big reason why I train kids to this day, um, because I saw let me, I saw development. Let me, let me from piggyback when he off did. that real fast, bro. So kids, man, young kids, if you out here, you being trained, appreciate a person that's doing something for you, and they not asking for nothing. If they giving you their time, time is way more valuable than money. All right, if if somebody's giving you their time, and they're investing that time into you, just make sure that you're appreciating it. You know what I'm saying, but um, let's go, let's go to talk. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, so um, let's talk about the summer. He transfers <laughs> the transfer portal. <laughs> this is before the transfer portal. Uh, what made you yeah, decide yeah. that you <laughs> wanted to leave Lamberton and that no, you no. wanted to go to WorldCom? Got to talk AAU because the, the reason why I transferred because no, of no, no, AAU. no, 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 no. I'm saying like we we gonna we gonna get into all of that. All right, so he. Yeah, all right, matter of right. fact, all right, let's, let's let's talk about AAU. Let's talk about AAU. So that summer, right, that so, was our first so this summer is where we played AAU. So go ahead. So that was my so that was my first summer, and I want to say this: AAU now is, is really a joke unless you play for uh, sponsored teams. If you're not on a sponsored team, it's really a joke. And I'm and this is the reason why. Um, from the game that I had 43 points, uh, I met someone named Amara Amara Austin, and he was another person that did uh, helped out with the newsletters and. Um, carrying as far as like stats and all that stuff and uh he introduced me to philly pride so i know a lot of you guys know philly pride um shout out to philly pride and come out yard um was, was philly and he pride put me on the national was back then now yeah real quick before you go anywhere was they as big as yeah. they was back yeah, go then ahead. now like was philly pride they were big? they we were, spon- we were sponsored by nike we were before team final before team oh. final we were team team catino mobley so catino mobley is um Sponsored our team. We were sponsored by Catino Mobley, but we were under Philly Pride umbrella. 
Oh, um, right, so, so, so we hold on. Well, Chris, Chris says it's a necessary evil. That's what he said. He said it's a necessary. Evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. No, for sure. Like, no, you're right. I, w- I would agree with that too, Chris. I would agree. But so, so the point I'm trying to make to kids right now is there. What we didn't have a team B or a team C or a team Gold or a team Orange. If you didn't make the national team, you went home, you worked on your game, and you came back next year and you tried out. It was just that simple. Or you go try out for another program, but they only had a national team. Um, and some of the guys that I um, joined when I did get on the national team uh, were guys that had won state championships. Penwood, Penwood's team at the time was crazy. They had a lot of uh, great guards at the time. They were winning states every year. They had won three. I think at the time um, they had won back-to-back two years in a row. Tyrone Garland was a beast. Jesse Morgan was a beast. Uh, both of these guys averaged about 30 points or somewhere around 30 points a game in the pub. They were in Division A. Um, there were a lot of other guys. Tyree Smith from um, Gratz, Simon Gratz, was actually a powerhouse back then when uh, when we were playing uh, in the early 2000s. And um, there were so many different schools, like so many different talented players from different schools on Philly Pride. And um, what kind of trumped me to, to transfer was more so trying to learn how to play basketball the right way. Because what I saw when I went down to Nationals in Orlando – was if you were a guy that was small, if you were a small guard, you had to know how to do other things than just shoot. And that, my game was really um, built on shooting. Um, but once I got down to uh, Orlando and we played against, like, Team Ohio, Team CP3, Team LeBron, all that, I saw that you had to do more than just shoot the ball. And so um, I ended up making the decision to transfer to World Communications Charter School with Kenyatta McKinney. I actually just saw him that night, too. Um, yeah, and man, uh, kill. Kill, <laughs> kill. So uh, I ended up, kill. I ended up transferring to World Com where I had to play more of a point guard role. So just like any other thing, like you stop shooting, you start trying to pass more, you start trying to be more of a playmaker and facilitator. So um, going going into my senior year, that was more of the mindset. It wasn't about scoring because I already proved that I could do that the year before. Okay, okay. So um, talk about let's talk about some uh some uh compare and contrasts between. Worldcom, Robert E. Lamberton. What's what's some compare? Some so one of the things I was one of the things I would say is um, on the good side, I had more help. Like I had uh, I had another lead guard, Sean Phillips. Um, he was he was really he actually. I want to say that he was actually someone that when I when I got there, I thought me and him would kind of bump heads a little bit because we both were point guards. But I was more so learned. He was already a traditional point guard. I was learning. I was more of a scorer than him, so I was kind of learning from him how to be a better point guard when I got there. Um, and I want to say that he was a year younger than me, by the way. So it doesn't matter your age, and you can really take a lot off of everybody's game if you're really uh, willing to learn. Um, his mom, his mom is legendary, Valerie Phillips. Uh, she came up playing basketball, women's basketball, and stuff like that. So he actually was, uh, you know, he had a parent that was playing basketball. Our our parents didn't play any sports. <laughs> My dad ran track, so uh, that's where I got the athleticism from. But for the most part, you know, I didn't come from a basketball background. So okay. um, I was actually just learning how to be a point guard, learning how to – do so, and, and it really dawned on me when uh my like I said first school that came out to look at me was East Stroud University, and when they came, um that's what they were looking for. They weren't looking to see if I could shoot. Like I said, I already proved that I could shoot the ball. They really were just looking to see um how well I can pass and how well can I play defense and and how much do I like the game, you know. And literally, I'll never forget this. Um, the coach, the first question he asked me was how was my grades. He didn't ask me, you know, anything about anything else. The, all he asked me was, how are your grades? And that's it. Right. You know, and we went from there. Yeah, so so just to piggyback off what you just said, um, to any young athletes that we got in the chat right now, grades is very important. Um, I'll give y'all a backstory. Um, I, I knew that I could not play basketball if unless my grades was right. Um, ninth grade year. A lot of people was, was scratching their head as to why I made the basketball team that year, right? Wasn't the most talented, but just based off of my grades and me being available and the other dudes that was actually good who'd had horrible grades, you know, it's just it, that's just how it works when you're in uh when you're in high school. Like if you're either eligible or you're ineligible. It's just that's just how it go. You know what I'm saying? There's no in betweens in that. So um Let's 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 go into let's get, let's go into a funny moment. Let's talk about what's a funny moment <laughs> in high school 
that you had that you wish <laughs> never happened? Like, what was a funny moment? Uh, or, you may, or, may have, or you may have wanted it. So, Who so, knows? Wait, so so one of them was um, we used to play. So for you kids, I want y'all to look this up. Uh, Sunny Hill, right? Look up Sunny Hill basketball. Sunny Hill is also a Philly legend as well. Um, the Sunny Hill League was popping back when, um, you know, high school basketball at the pub was booming. This is when the pub was booming. Um, we played against South Philly team. Um, and we were actually, so we beat a team before we played South Philly team. We blew a team out before we played South Philly team. And South Philly team consists of some of the top players. I want to say a couple of the players were top 100 in the country, in the country, not just the state of Pennsylvania, in the country. And um, uh, we were playing against some of the Catholic League guys like uh, New- that played at Newman Gray, Tyreek Duran. Shout out to Tyreek Duran. Um, Tony Chenault, uh, Biggie Menace from South Philly, uh, Jameer Hanner. Uh, it was a bunch of big names, a bunch of D1 guys. They blew us out by like fifty points. <laughs> Jesus, Christ. it was a bad. Day. It was they. I know a lot. Like I'm saying it was nothing we could really do about. It. They were just so good. They were so much a more superior ball? than a fifty ball. Fifty ball. Ooh. It was embarrassing. But um, and that was my first year. This was my first year playing with World Com. We Chris we, said. We, uh, Chris said. Chris said y'all got roasted. <laughs> we got. We got. No, we got toasted. Roasted and toasted. Roasted. They got. Uh, <laughs> I want to say at halftime, by halftime start, we were already down by 30 points. They were just so much better than us, you know. But I want to say this, too, though. They were playing our school team. Um, a lot of the guys that were playing for the for the uh, South Philly team, they all didn't go to the same school. So, basically, it was like a, a all-star South Philly team that we played that we ran up against. I want to say a great moment was <laughs> hold when – Hold on, bro. Hold on. I, he said they Wait. had a duck contest mid game. <laughs> yeah, they had. They oh, did, you know what, yo, I was there. there. I was there. Wait, 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 wait. I was there. I want to. I want to say. I want to say. I want to say another player though. Danny Stewart. He killed us. Like he was dunking oh, yeah, from the free yeah, throw line. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was. Dunking. Danny Stewart. He had a, a younger brother too. I forgot his name. Uh, but uh, Danny Stewart. Stewart was. Derek. That's Derek, Derek. Stewart. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, so this is when. So this is back when <laughs> in the Catholic League, uh, Newman Garetti ran the Catholic League back then. Um, West mm-hmm. Catholic was always uh, they competed a little bit. They they were comp- competition, but this is when Newman Garetti uh, really ran the Catholic league. All those mm-hmm. other schools, um, Carroll was pretty good. They had Wanye Green and DJ Irving, child of them too. Um, but there really wasn't a lot of buzz around the Catholic league. It was really more so about the pub back then. Um, mm-hmm. And so the pub is where everybody wanted to play. Um, but yeah, I would say that was a horrible moment. But I do want to stay on the flip side. We played South Philly again in uh, Sunny Hill Championship, and we it was a very competitive game. Mm. When you say competitive, uh, how much y'all lose by? <laughs> Wait, Broski done froze. Oh, yeah, Roman. Yeah, you forgot about Roman. Roman was running it back then, too. Oh, yeah, Roman was. Oh, yeah, Malik Wayne. Yeah, Shout out to Malik, Malik Wayne, too. Yeah. That's my guy. Malik Wayne, he's the coach of uh, Camden now, but uh, he was he was a dog. Rock, or, or what's the other one? Rock him, Rock him. What's his name, bro? Rock him. Uh, Rakeem, Rakeem, some. I can't think of his last name. I, I can't exactly think of his last name. He was he was a guard. He was tough too. Yeah, Roman was Roman was another tough. Uh, so when you say competitive, what, so it went from fifty to what? Fifty to twenty? No, we lost. But we ended up losing the game by twelve. Okay. The next time around, we lost by twelve. So we okay. we actually did a lot better. I think we were down at most 18 points, somewhere around 18 points at some point, but we, we ended up losing by right, 12. Right, right. But yeah, it was no, a competitive no, no, 12 Chris, No, Chris stamped it. If Chris stamped it, I believe he said y'all rumbled in the chat. No, Chris, no Chris, Chris was there. Chris used to be all the games, and he used to record all the games and stuff. So it ain't, I ain't sitting here making up numbers. I think I was there, too. I'm not, I can't really remember it, but I, I know game, I was there the, the game. game. I know I was there the game when he had the dunk contest. I was definitely there. I remember that game. But, so the game that the dunk contest game, we're going to stamp that as the dunk contest game. That yeah, was at Temple. That game. was at uh, Temple's. Uh, Temp- this is when Temple had McGonagall Hall and all that. This was okay. at Temple. Um, okay. South. So I want people, I want to give people perspective. Um, Alden Reed is where Sunny Hill League was played. It's in South Philly, so that's their home crowd. So anytime, uh, like Rec 6 right now, um, it's the South Philly team, uh, the older guys that played back then when we were playing. Um, the gym was packed of just straight-up South Philly. 
Nobody in from nobody nobody came out from Overbrook Park or nothing like that. <laughs> but Chris, Chris was in the building though. I ain't gonna lie. All right, okay, all right. So, so we gonna go from we gonna transition from you know funniest moment to um this is something that uh college coaches used to talk about and it's like yeah. in the moment when they say it when 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 they discussing this with you you probably like as a kid you like man nobody care what you talking about it but. What has basketball mm-hmm. uh, basically taught you outside of the gym? Like, like what are some things that you could tie into think, basketball yeah. and into your outside life as well? I think one of the biggest things you could take from it is that you get whatever you put into it is what you get. You get what I'm saying? So if you put... Hold on, you might have to say it again. You're kind of breaking up. It don't up. matter who you are. Wait, can you say it Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're breaking up. Are you start? Yeah, say it now. you good. So what I, what I was saying was uh, at some point it's going to come to an end. So uh, the biggest the biggest thing that I took away from it is that you get in what you put out. So whatever energy you put into getting better every day, if you're waking up every day and working out and really working on your game, it's going to show. You're not going to have to tell anybody how great you are. Or anything, your game is going to prove to them to prove the coaches and anybody how great you are, and that helps you out with real life because there's so many different things you could be choosing to do other than playing basketball. And so the effort that you would put into um, doing basketball, there's so much that you can take away from it. Teamwork is a big part of basketball. Dedication, working on your craft every day, um, that's something that you can take into the into your next chapter as far as life. And I think that's where like. Um, Kobe Bryant was headed when he was done with basketball. I think that his life was kind of like just starting um, before he passed right, away. Right. Um, so that's something big to think about. Would you would you say um, would you say effort is a big part of basketball on the court and your life outside the court? Because you know you have to like uh, you know coaches always say this: you cannot teach effort. You know can't teach. I'm about to say that. Too. I say that. I say that to all all my kids. This is my program. I say. You know, I can teach you how to shoot. I can teach you how to dribble. I can teach you how to do a lot of things, but I can't teach effort. There's just something that you you got to have it. And if you don't have it, you're not going to make it too far in basketball. You might make it to middle school. You actually might make it to high school without effort, but you won't make it any for You won't be the man. You won't start. You won't get any minutes. You won't um, be able to put up big numbers without any effort. It's just never going to happen because that's some, That's a coach's best friend. Coaches love effort. That's the big. They love uh, guys that dive on the floor for the loose balls and stuff like that. They love that stuff. And can we agree that college is more of a business and high school is more so like a, I would say, you know, more so like a family loving environment. You know, like right. you actually care about your feelings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, so the, high school- the vast majority of schools do, not all of them. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, it depends on what school you go to. If you're going to a, a nationally ranked school, it's already a business. You get what I'm saying? Just on a bigger scale. Um, if you're going to a school that's ranked in the country, you can't expect anything less than it to be a business. Um, if you're going to just a, a school that's in your neighborhood, it's going to be loving, caring, people like checking on you. Um, but if you're going to those schools that the Manta Catholics and Sierra Canyons and school like that, mm-hmm. they don't really care about you. All they care about is whether you're producing on the court. I'll even I'll even throw MOTEP in um, schools like MOTEP Camden, um, tri-state area teams, Newman Garetti. Those schools. I mean, either you're going to produce or you're not. And it's really just it's really just that. Right. And uh, just speaking on a, a fitness uh, level and uh, just uh, you know because you work out a lot. Um, what what would be the average amount of workouts would you tell a, a young athlete to conduct in their day? Like, what are some things they should do? I want to say um, three just in case, four if you can. So three, three just workouts, case, four if you can. three just in case, four if you can. So okay. uh, if you want to, like, basketball is not about how many days you put in. It's about how much hours you put into it. Right. It don't matter if you worked out every day. If you only worked out one time a day, um, I know somebody that worked out three times a day, and they're, they're three times better than you because they worked out three times a day. And um, that's that's something that was instilled, and in, I want to say me, um early on it was something like you gotta you gotta love to work out and so i love working out like i'm 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 31 years old now but my body is just if if people know me when i was younger you know people that do know me um, my body doesn't look any different than 
or it probably looks better than what it did when I was younger. So staying fit, staying in shape. Um, they always say it's better to be ready than have to get ready. So that's one of the biggest things. I, I would definitely tell a kid. What about you know, three of you? Three what about diet. Three, what diet. About that's diet? that's that's more important than the workout. The way you okay. eat. Um, kids eat a lot of snacks. Um, I mean, obviously their intake is a little bit different than ours. As we get older, they can tolerate a lot more uh, sodium, salt, and stuff like that. Um, what you put in your body, think of your body like a car. Like think of your body like a like your car is a Corvette, and you can't put regular gas in a Corvette. You got to put premium gas in the Corvette. Or well, it's a sports okay. car, so you can't just put regular gas in it. Or at some point, your car is going to break down. Your engine's not going to work as well as it could. So you got to look at it like that. What you put in your body um, is going to come out when you start to play. <laughs> like that's what happens when you start to sweat, and um, you know you start to get tired. You start to feel those cheeseburgers that you got from McDonald's and Burger King and all that stuff. You start to feel it when you start playing. So um, stay. I wouldn't say like you have to eat purely like vegetables and all that but definitely we want to eat vegetables every week um some type of fruit every week um, make sure you put it in your diet um it doesn't have to always be fish protein can be chicken um but just make sure that you know you're eating the right stuff and when i say chicken i don't mean go to popeyes and order a 12 piece <laughs> popeyes and go knock it out i mean like really grilled grilled chicken um baked chicken stuff like that that, that can really give you good protein okay. When you're done working out, if you work out and you eat uh, general toast chicken, you just you just negated the workout that you just did. So now it's like start from square one again. Okay, all right. So I, I get what you're saying. Um, so, so now let's talk about. Um, so what are you currently doing now? What are some What are some things you're doing now? Like, you know, basketball has got you to this point that you're at now. So what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with yourself? So, so one of the things that uh, and me, me, I think me and you just actually talked about this. I, I've I've met so many guys that play basketball, whether I competed against them or whether I played with them, and a lot of people don't give back um, to basketball for the kids, for the youth, for the next generation that's coming up. And um, like I said, one of the biggest things that I wanted to do when I was done with basketball, um, as far as chasing it, trying to play pro and all that. Mm -hmm. um, was give back and help kids that that were like me. Like I was that kid that needed help that nobody wanted to help because I wasn't um, the most talented kid. I was just a kid that loved to work, you know. And so, um, one thing I wanted to do is help kids that need help and actually need the work. Um, so, and I, that's how I ended up founding a like just wanting to help kids get better every day and show them like the, the there's a blueprint to it that you can follow to get better. You just got to be willing to put in the work and effort. So I do right, that so, as so, far as so the basketball. Because you, you broke up for a second. So you said you founded PF Workouts, right? Yeah. yeah. So I so found where, PF where, Workouts. Where, where, is, where is PF Workouts located, just in case some of the kids oh, in the chat wants to? Right. I mean, right, right, now, right, now we're, right now we're located um, at AFC Fitness right off City Ave. Um, to give you guys perspective is where right near where that new Chick-fil-A is on. I know y'all love Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A, too. Right, right where the Target and Chick Fil A Chick -fil is, out on City Ave. It's not far. It's literally probably like around the corner from from there. So yeah, anybody can get to it. It's accessible. It's twenty minutes away from any any part of the city. Um, if you're looking to get some good quality work, and I want to say this, every every I mean, kids work out everywhere, and that's fine. I don't care if a kid works out with me, or if a kid works out with Born Leader, or if a kid works out with Chuck Ellis. I'm just giving you guys a couple of the trainers that I know. Or Staff, Staff is my man. He actually works out at the same, works kids out at the same gym that I'm at. It doesn't matter where you work out at, but just make sure that you're getting quality work. And there's a difference between quality training versus training, just regular, just straight up going to a gym and working out. Quality training is ten times different than just going to a gym and just playing a three on three or playing one on one for the whole training session. It's not. It's not made to be that, you know, it's made to develop and get better. If you if you don't have a weak, if you have if your left hand is weak, if you're writing, your left hand is weak. You shouldn't work on anything but your left hand at it. That's it. It's really just that simple. And a lot of times kids already know what they should be working on. They just decide that they want to skip over it. And you can't you can't skip over it because at some point that weakness is going to show. Um, and so that's something that I want to just say, like, 
make sure that if you're going to work out, that you're getting quality work in, not just going to work out because your friend is going to this trainer or because your your friend is really good and you just want to work out with him or her. So make sure that you're getting quality work. Okay. All right. See, I heard it first. Um, so, so since we're on a, the topic of working out and um, stuff like that, how important is working out at game speed minus to going at chip speed? You know what I'm saying? Like, like so how, how important is that? That is, um, I want to say t- that's top two. Uh, I think that's that's right there with effort. I want to put it right there with effort because. If you don't train game speed, you'll never know what it's like to be in a, in a game mode. So right. um, I think one of the biggest things that I tell my kids to take away from training is to push, imagine, imagine being, when you're in training, when you walk in the gym, from the moment you walk in the gym, imagine that you're about to go play in a basketball game. I don't care what type of training you're doing. You just got to put yourself in the positions already mentally. And then, and then if, once you do that, you already did half the job. Now it's all about just going out there. And doing every drill with purpose and with intention, not just saying, "Okay, yeah, I'm at training and I'm I worked out today." Now nah, you got to make sure that every rep, every shot, every dribble is game speed, so that when you go play in a basketball game, your training translates. Because a lot of what I see is kids going to work out with uh, a lot of different people, or or even if they go to the gym by themselves, and the training doesn't translate. I see kids do all kinds of nice moves and stuff during training or during open gym. When you go turn them lights on and put them in a real game, they can't do none of it. I see kids dunking in layup lines. I'm going to give you guys one. I see kids dunk that, that can dunk in layup lines but won't attempt to dunk in a real game, whether it's on a fast break or whether it's dunking on somebody. You know, and that part of the reason why is because when they train, they don't do it every single time. If you're, if you're a kid that knows how to dunk, you can grab the rim, you should be dunking the ball every single time you go for a layup, every single time, even if you miss it. It's not even about missing it because in training, you learn from your mistakes. That's the whole point of training. Um, kids are trying to be perfect during training, and there's no such thing. Like right. Training is where you make all your mistakes so that when you go play in a basketball game, the prize is when you go play in a game, you limit your mistakes because you're going to turn the ball over at some point. It's a part of basketball. But it's all about being able to handle pressure and just building on your skills. So I think that playing game speed, training at game speed, go hand in hand. Okay. So now, so since we on the um, on this topic, who are who are some some young guards or some not even guards? Who are some young players? Uh, and it don't have to be like people that you train and stuff like. But who are some young young people that you like that you you know that you think like. Um, like basically, like you would want to play with, you know what I'm saying? Like, like who are some of the guards out here? Or some of the players? Like, I know for me, a player I would love to play with. His name is Kabir Washington. I would love to play with that kid. That kid is good. Kabir, right? Yeah. I, I would um, love to play with Kabir. I think I think um I think there are a lot there are a lot of kids. Um, as far as the Philly scene, um, uh, I, I, I'm gonna pick a kid that I train first, and then I'll mm-hmm. I'll go from there. Uh, Jamal Jamal Hicks from Penn Charter, um, Jamal newly Hicks, added just, to Penn. Just just transferred to Penn Charter. He, he's a kid that um, he he's unselfish. Um, he's willing to. He can play off the ball. He can play on the ball. He plays hard as defense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a kid that I that I see as far as like on the basketball scene. I you know I go to Philly Live period and all that stuff, and I probably watch. Um, Dang, that's, that's so many. It's so many good kids. Like it's so many of them. Um, All right, let me put the pressure on you. Who's the best guard yeah. in the city right now? Oh man, here we go. Here we who go. Who is the Who is the best guard in the city? And I'm here talking. And hold right, on, so I'm, I'm, ta- I'm talking Catholic League and Public League. Who's uh, the best guard in the city uh, so right I, now? Look, I'm I'm raw. I'm gonna give it to y'all straight. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it to y'all straight. Like. Okay. I don't care about uh, who's ranked and all that stuff, and that that stuff doesn't phase me. I know what I see. Like I'm a trainer, I know how to analyze basketball. When I watch basketball, I can guarantee you that there's things that I see that kids are not seeing. And I think kids are kids are so hype over um, certain guys in the city that have this uh, this crazy background. But there's some kids that are the real deal. Like I like uh, Jalil Bethea from um, Wood. I think he's gonna be. I think he's gonna be really good. Um, at that's some the, point, um, I'm the I'm, best I'm, guard in the city, bro. 
Yeah, yeah. Though, I like him a lot. Like I, I like his game a whole lot. I think that with him, you can't go wrong because you get a little bit of he. He plays with high energy. Um, he shoots the ball really well. Um, he's athletic. He shows he shows athleticism. Um, I I like as far as quintessential point guards. I'm a short guard, so I'm gonna go with Rob Wright. I love Rob Wright game. Mm. Um, I think as far as like true point guard. Uh, my Noel, I think he's tough. Um, and I want to say this. I got to say this for everybody. I've, I've known Amad Noel since he was, he's from our neighborhood, from Overbrook Park. Don't get it twisted. He's not from North Philly or West Philly. Uh, he's from Overbrook Park. Well, West, Overbrook Park and West Philly go hand in hand. He's from Overbrook Park. And as long as I've known him, He's always been ahead of the, ahead of his class. He's always been better than his peers. He's always been better than the kids at his age. Mm-hmm. Um, he was always good. Um, there is never there never was going to be a drop off because he just was always good. Um, he I used to take him to I, I used to train him. I used to take him to um, play open gyms with older guys, and he used to kill them. Like he always was just bigger than the kids his age. He always was more advanced than the kids his age. And um, I'm really, I'm really like interested to see how his game translates on the next level. Um, I, but I think he's doing a phenomenal job as far as um, um, he doesn't have Justin Edwards anymore. So that's going to be something that um, we're going to really pay attention to. He's probably going to get double teamed most of the games that he plays in. But I'm, I'm, I'm really ready to see how well he handles the pressure and stuff like that. So, okay, you know, so shout out to him. So, like he, he. So, um. All right, I'm gonna ask you two more questions. I'm gonna put you on the spot two more times. Who is the best big man? Go ahead, that's who's, cool. Who's the best big man in the city, as far as like like real traditional big man? Ah, uh, sorry. Right, can I give you a one A one B? You give me one A one B, but you gotta tell me who one A and who's one B. All right, so one A. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with with Thomas Sorber. I'm gonna go with okay. him, as far as okay. big man. Okay, I'm gonna I go with Thomas Sorber from. I think uh, he's uh, one, bro. I, th- I think he's one. I don't think it's one A, one B. I think I, he's one. No, no, no. I'm gonna tell you why I like Sharif Jackson. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why from Roman, right? Sharif Jackson. I've I've trained him. I've seen his motor. His motor is crazy. Um, I think that Thomas Sorber is more skilled than Sharif Jackson, but I think that um, Sharif Jackson has a more upside to be more than just a big man. I think that he can definitely turn into like a. Um, more of a wing at some point in his career. I think he can. I think he's capable of doing it. Um, it's like I said, it's still got to see. But I, from what I've seen from his motor, like just from working with him and how he he's very coachable, like super coachable. And not to say that Thomas Sorber isn't. I don't know Thomas Sorber personally. Um, I've seen him play, but I don't know him personally. But like I said, I still think he's 1A. Okay. Um, that being said. But uh, Shreve Jackson is definitely uh, another kid on the high school scene that I've watched that I could say is is that boy. Okay, so here's here's the last on the spot question: Who is the best young raw talent player right now? It don't have to be ah. ranked. He could he could be anybody because honestly, mm-hmm. raw raw talent to me could is not really about rankings when it comes to raw talent. It's all about whether or not that person put the work in to get to that level. You know what I'm saying? So, so when you say you say young, are you saying like freshman I'm, young, I'm, middle I'm, school? I'm talking, young, I'm, I'm talking freshman and we talking high school. I don't really care too all much. All right, we're talking high school. school. All right. All right. Uh, damn. Yo, I like I like RJ from um MLK. RJ Smith, I like you like RJ? RJ? I like RJ. He so he's a dog. You get him, and that's what I like about him. He's just a dog. Like he mm. he don't he never get too high. He never get too low. And he just play anytime he can make a a, a play. He just makes a, the right play for some reason. You know, I think when I watched that game with him and Cam, them uh, uh, Tech versus Camden, he really gave him a spark. He was the littlest guy on the court. Not right. to mention, he's the littlest guy on the court. I like I like him as far as like uh, a kid that's new on the scene and. And he, like I said, he's young. He got a long, he got a long career ahead of him as far as high school basketball. So I like his game a lot. You know, okay. All right. uh, there's okay. a couple other kids though. I just can't like off the top right here think about it. But there, there are definitely I'll give some you, other games. I'll, give you, two, I'll give you one minute to think of somebody. I'll give you one minute to think of somebody. Chat. I like. We got nine people in the chat. 
You got a question for Pierre? Listen, Go um, in the chat for me. So we, so I mean, you know, I only know what I've been around. So I mean, I've seen that kid X from West Philly. I like okay. him a lot. X, X like from West Philly. Philly. Okay. I like I like X a lot um, because he he just he got the confidence that you need to have as a point guard. Even if even if he's not the best point guard on the court, um, I think that over time he'll definitely. And it's and like I said, I've just met him. So another thing that I want kids to understand. Um, first impression is everything, you know, the way people perceive you, the way people look at you and what they think about you. So, so, you right, so let me ask you, you a question. What what was it that stuck out with X that, that you noticed? And he was like, I like this kid. So I walked up to him and I was like, I was like, yo, I heard about you. I was like, um, they said they choose because this is what his coach. This is what his coach says. His coach told me, I want to say two weeks ago. Oh, no, a week ago. Um, He was like, yeah, he, he's our next one. So I walked up to him and I was like. I heard you pretty good. He said, "Well, you heard right." <laughs> and I just love that. I, I just love that confidence. Like it's something about it's something about guards that when you have that confidence and you have that killer in you, you are gonna definitely make it far. And when I played against him, he played against me. He um he definitely I want to say held his own. He definitely was active. There's things that he can get better at. Like any kid, I mean, I'm 31 years old. I can only imagine he's probably 16, you know, or something like that, 15 no, actually, or something. No, he's actually 14. He just yeah, 14. That's crazy. He's actually 14 years old. So I can only imagine, like, you know, what what he can do when he, you know, gets a little bit older. Like, I, I left the gym feeling like he got better. No matter what I was doing, um, I felt like he got better when we left the gym mentally and, um, when the game was over and everything, he dabbed me up. And uh, we, we talked a little bit as far as basketball. And, you know, when kids ask questions, that's when you know that, you know, they're going to be something special. Those kids that are uh, optimistic and they, they, they're thinkers and they, they want to get better. They want to learn from people who, who came before them. It doesn't matter how good you are as a player. Um, they right, know so that I, there's I, something that I know. The game. So I lied to you, bro. I lied to you. I lied to you. I actually got one more question. Put you on the spot. One more. Oh, uh, hold on. You good? You know your shit keep going in and out. You know? I know you live from the basement and all that. Let's, let's wait for him to get back. My oh, man just frozen. Yeah, no, the whole all right, so, thing all right, so just hold froze. On, just all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm lying. Two more questions. Women's basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah. girls basketball. We got, we got, we oh, got to dig up the that. girls. I was, about, yo, Hold on. I was about to say we Hold got on. to show the girls some Hold love. On. We, we, we got to show the girls that, some bro. love. We have to show the girls some love. I was about to say I, 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 I will be remiss. I will be remiss if I did not show love to the girls. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually going to try my best to make it out to yeah. more girls games this year. Um, but who is the who is the best girl in the city right now? Who is the best young young female in the city right now? It's it's so many of them, but listen, I may I may be biased. I like Logan Greer at Front Central. Logan Greer, Logan Greer, Logan Front Central. You can't go you can't go wrong with size. You can't go wrong with uh, a big guard. She's a big guard for a girl, six three, six three and a half. Um, she can block shots, block right. shots. She can shoot. She can shoot the trade ball really well. Um, she plays defense. Um, she she has leadership qualities, and she has good. Like, I think I want a lot of kids to understand when they do these rankings and they do um, how well certain players are. Sometimes they go based off of upside. It doesn't mean you're not a good player. It doesn't mean that you're not better than the next kid. Some kids just have more upside than other kids. If that makes sense to everybody. Are, are you? And, are uh, you I think are Logan, you hit with any girls in the pub? Do you know any any public league girls? There was that one girl. What's her name? Ah, she goes to Fells. Fast. Um, oh, so, I know you talking, yeah. talking about. They call her fifty about. ball or something like that. Okay, I'm I, me I, personally. So, right, so, hold, hold on, I, I, this is off my personal experience, right? Right, we right. We was right. at, uh, you know, shout out to West Philly, went, made it to the championship this year. Right. Uh, we went to the championship before we played. We watched Auden Reed versus Emotep. That girl, right. Shayla Smith, bro, she's the real. Tell her she's tough. She's, she's tough. A real she's deal, tough, bro. I, I think she's the she's best tough. public league girl. She's right probably now. the best. I would I would say she is too. But I, I I just like the girls tonight. I just like her swag. Like she got swag about her. I don't know. It's something about small guards, man. I, I just like their swag. But um, 
I want to give you two, uh, uh, like at least two or three other girl guards that are really good. Um, and you, I, go that interact, I, you go, you go, interact, interact, and uh, you Carter. already know who I'm going to, Ryan Carter, I know, right? I, know, I already knew that. I knew that. Ryan Carter for sure, 100. I, I, I know who else you about to go. I, I can say the name first. Jesse Mogus, West Town. Already knew. Gotta go, Jesse Mogus. You know what I'm saying? Um, we actually a couple... watched Jesse grow. Like she was, I, she yo, was coming yo, to the camp. Yo, I gotta say this, yo. All these kids that I'm naming. At some point, I work with them. Like, I, I, so I don't want people to think like I'm just um, what they call it. Glazing. What they call it? Uh, I'm not glazing. Mm. I've worked with Jesse. I worked with Jesse when she was younger. Up until a certain point, I have I had the opportunity to have Jesse and Ryan at my camp. So right. these are kids that I've seen grow up. These are not kids that I even like Logan Greer. I've watched her grow up. Like, I've known her and her family for probably six years now. And so I'm not just calling out kids' names that I don't know or I just see uh, articles and stuff about them or they got offers or whatever the case is. These are kids that I actually know, that I actually work with, all right? Okay. I just want to throw that. So now if I'm not naming a kid, um, I don't want anybody to feel like um, I won't at some point get to know who you are because I will. I'm on the basketball scene. Um, like I said, I'm one of the uh, best trainers in the tri-state area right now. Mm, um, and talk, so, talk, talk your, talk your shit, man. Talk uh, your I want to, no, no, that's fair. Talk your shit. <laughs> I don't. Uh, so, 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 and I think that if you guys, uh, if you ask kids and ask parents what they see when they come to my training sessions, they'll tell you. Like, I, I don't have to say it. I'm just telling you. For those of you guys that don't know or never been to a training session, you're missing out if you haven't. Even if you haven't worked out, I'm not telling you, you got to work out me for a lifetime. If you haven't been to uh, any of my training sessions, you can't judge it because you haven't been there yet. But right. definitely, I have one of the best training programs that you guys can because can, a lot of the kids they don't know they haven't been there, they haven't seen the gym, they haven't um, worked, or haven't worked with me before. So um, before you can judge who the best trainer is in the in the area, try all of them out. This is what I'll say: try all of them out, and then you can make your decision as far as who you think is the best trainer. Yeah. And who you think isn't because you can't just say um, and, and and a lot of these guys, I know them. A lot of the trainers that you guys go to, I know you can't just say one, one person is a better trainer than the other. And you haven't tried the other trainer out because there's one thing that this trainer might te be teaching you that this trainer might know or the this other is, trainer might know or not. This is what I want to debunk when it comes to the this person is better than this person, that person. I feel like in the, in, in, in the field of working out, even in the field, you know, I do videography and stuff. Even in that field, it's not about who's better. Right. It's about who fits your need for a for real. Who can help? If, if, if that makes sense. It's all about who can help. If you go into somebody who's going to have you doing, uh, 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 you know, stuff that you probably ain't going to do in a game, then that's technically not on them. That's mm -hmm. more so on you because – just like you said, you got to try right. them out. You got to see, like, how how do you feel after a workout? I try you know them what out. I'm saying, see, like, you gotta you gotta mm -hmm. test the waters, you know. And like I said, everybody isn't for everybody. If that makes sense, right? You know what I'm saying. And um, and, and, I'm, know, and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna give I'm gonna give an example, right? I have kids that come to me for just strictly strength and conditioning, nothing right. else, because they might be getting skill work from somewhere else. Right. So some kids just come for for Vertimax training. Some kids just come for shooting. Some kids come for one on one. Some kids come for small group. Every and I'm not. Like I said I'm not saying that um, it has to be a this trainer is better than the other. One trainer might fit your needs better than the other, though. I'm gonna just yeah, say that. Absolutely. One absolutely. trainer might fit your needs better than another one. Absolutely. So you can't just say, "All right, this is my trainer, and I'm locked in for life." Try other trainers out, and if you feel like they're not, then you can kind of make a decision from them. But until you do that, make sure that you give everybody the equal opportunity. To work with you before you say, "Oh, yeah, I go to the best trainer in the city." Give All everybody right. an opportunity. It's just like it's just like kids. Kids want everybody to have the best opportunity as far as seeing them as a player. Um, give everybody else the same. Just do. All right. So let me ask you a question, right? Um, yeah. You got you got a hundred dollars in your pocket. You got a hundred dollars. Your mom, mama just hit the lotto for a couple. You probably hit a scratch off for two hundred. You know what I'm saying? She if I hit the lotto, I hope give me more than a hundred dollars. <laughs> Listen, to, hold on, hold on, hold on. She hit the no, 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 not the not the lotto. You know, you only you gotta okay. be older Puerto Rican to hit the lotto. She, so, she hit a scratch off. She, 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 she hit a scratch, scratch off. off. She hit a scratch off. She hit for two hundred, right? She hit for two hundred. She can give you a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, you a basketball player. Do you hit up a videographer or do you hit up a trainer? 
Listen, I'm hitting up a tra- trainer. Like, no, like, like, be, be real. I'm going like, to tell be, you why. Like, be real. Be no, real. Like, are you no. hitting up a... A kid is going to hit up a videographer. Okay, and why? I'm going to hit up a trainer. But why, though? A kid why? is going to hit up a video- Okay, so a kid is going to hit up a videographer because they, they see the trend of kids that get these highlight tapes, and okay. they want that. They want a highlight tape. Kids don't want to get better. They want a highlight tape. And I never, like, understood that. Like, uh, and I'm going to say this. And uh, it's funny that Austin Rivers said this in one of his interviews. If you guys get a chance, go on YouTube. And he said this to his, he had like a, he has like a uh, AAU team. He said this, you only got a highlight tape back then if you were that bull. And if you got a highlight tape, you didn't even know the camera was there. You didn't even know ball is like, you, if, ball, if ball, ball's life was there, you didn't even know they were there. Right. So imagine a lot of the kids that go and play in a game and they invited a cameraman to come to the game. So they know they got to show out. You get what I'm I saying? Think, I, I think a lot of times, just based off of my experience, I, I, me personally, I think like y'all, like kids, young athletes, I think y'all put a lot of pressure on yourself. Like, yeah, I, it was it was this one kid I did a video for. His dad even came to me afterwards and said, you know, maybe next time we'll, uh, I'll, I'll just c- contact you and then he just won't know. Because you gotta think right. about it. You like you, the pressure of being perfect is like is is just not. It's, it's just, it don't always fluctuate right in the game. It just doesn't because you never can know. I, and it, can I say especially thing, if you, especially when the opposing team say, see a camera, the opposing team see a camera, they get disrespected. I'm just be all tell you that right now. They get can disrespected. I, not, can I see it? Can I can I say another thing? If you're a kid and you don't get minutes, stop wasting these cameramen time. Stop Please. telling them to come out the. Game. Stop telling them to come out the games, and you know you're not getting in, or you know you're you don't know if you're going to play or not. Guys that are in the game, like I said, most of the guys that are in the game, and my brother um, that's in the grind media, he can attest to this. The, the people already know who to put the camera on when the game starts. Oh yeah, absolutely. the cameraman already knows the camera. On. They know what's going to get the grand buzzing. They know what's going to get YouTube buzzing. So if you're a guy that's Looking to get, uh, at least, at the very least, if you're looking to get a highlight tape, work on your game first. This is why I say get training first before you get the highlight tape. Because you get the training, you can prepare yourself for that at highlight. least at the very least, <laughs> for the highlight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? At least or, you can go get a nice. Or or, or, or if you're going to do a video, you know, you know, I guess get a, do a training video, I guess, you know, just to sh- but do me personally, right, this, 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 this actually what I wanted to transition to next, right? How important is it? How important is it to block out everything while you're in the midst of training, like like going going zero dark thirty? I think that's what LeBron right. called it, like like no social yeah. media, no nothing, just locking in to what you're trying to do, and then once you know once that time comes for the cameras to come out, you know you you you'll be ready. So I want how I want everybody is, to like I want like everybody just going dark, pay. just going zero dark. How important right. is that? So, so, so I want everybody to pay attention to this, right? Everybody. You can't do five things at one time. So you, you got to put your energy into one thing. So that, that saying where they say you put all your eggs in one basket. Um, and then I think or, Kobe or, said. Or you can't borrow from Peter to pay Paul. Right. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. You, so you, have to, you have to be willing. So all right, kids aren't willing to take everything that comes along with basketball. Kids only want to take the good that comes along with basketball. They don't want to take the failures, the injuries, and all that stuff that comes along with it. And what I see a lot of times is when when as soon as a kid gets to a moment where they're they're not doing well at basketball, they quit. And it right. and what what I want everybody to understand is I made it very farther than I should have made it. Very farther than I should have made it because I fell so many times. I fell so many times. I, 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 my, my younger brother got to watch me fail so many times that that helped him. Even if it's not for you, it might be better for the next person. So, you, uh, going to the NBA may not be in the cards for you, bro. But yeah, even right. if it's not, that don't mean you can't help the next person. And that's what that's what I currently do right now. Like, yes, I had a shitty college career. My college basketball career was horrible, but. Right. It ended up preparing me to help kids get better and learn what to get better at on the college aspect. And now I have kids that are in my program that are able to get college offers and stuff like that. So that's that is the really the reap the benefits of everything. So you have to be able to put everything into it. If you're not willing to put everything into basketball, then don't even do it. 
because you're not gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get at some point you're gonna get somewhere with it, but you're not gonna get as far as you could have. And a lot of what kids don't understand is you get older, you start to like to do other things. <laughs> like you start to like girls. Um, girls become a big thing with boys. Boys big, become big, a big thing big with distraction. girls. Big, big distraction. A, a big distraction. Uh, one of the biggest distractions, and I'm going to tell you all this. I didn't want to go to my uh, my coach and Chris. Chris Kahar, once again, was giving me good advice. Yo, you need more development. Go junior college. Go to NA, go NAIA first before you decide you want to go D2, D1, or anything. Any D, even D3, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a girlfriend. I did not want to leave my girl. I didn't want to go too far to school away from my girlfriend. Mm. Ended up settling for a school instead of being able to go anywhere I wanted to go. And so I want these are the stories that are going to help you guys get to where you want to go. You got to be willing to take everything that come along with this basketball stuff. Because if not, you want to miss out. I missed out on so many opportunities because I had a girlfriend leaving out of high school and I wanted to be close. Right. Now let me ask you a question. You know, and it, Quick question, quick question, yeah. quick, 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 quick. Are yeah. you still with that same girl? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, all right. I just want, I, I just so, wanted, to, I just, so, I just wanted to let that so, be known for the chat. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 in a nut, in a nutshell, absolutely not. You get what I'm saying? That was that was my first experience of it, and um, obviously other life things happen um along my journey that you guys don't know, um, but that that was I think. Coming straight out of high school is your only chance to make the right choice. And if you mess up on your decision, it can it can hinder you for the rest of your college career. Because right. once you play that first that, that first college game, your clock starts, and you and and you go from having one year left to two years left to three to four. So right. you gotta really take that into consideration when you guys are growing up. You start, like I said, you start to like other things. The other things become more attractive to you: cars, having yeah. money. I'm about to say, like, now, you know like, it's, it's, it's so much things that can, like, distract these kids. It's so crazy. Like, now they got gaming. Yeah. You feel me? Like, now, you know, kids, they want to game now. They don't even want to play ball anymore. They want to game. They right. want to do things that just, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's everything is just a little different now. So, it's just way more distractions than it was back when we was playing. And um, right. I feel like, I feel like the, the people that stay focused on what they want to do and they know what they want to do, those are the ones that actually – take it to the next level if, if, if yeah we're being i want to i, I want to say this uh i want to say this about justin edwards real quick um and i'm, I'm i worked out with him one time uh shout out to tahar sutton tahar sutton um, shout out to tahar. He was, tahar when the journey first started he was the first trainer i ever met in my life um I, like i said chris i don't really consider chris a, a trainer I, I really consider him someone that just he was like a big brother to me he, he's more than um, a trainer to me so i'm not going to just put him in the trainer category um but to har sutton he used to coach at MOTEP. um i i had the pleasure of working with um justin edwards one day one day um we just were in the gym and he wanted to get some extra work and he asked to har could he work out with me and um i want to say this to you guys i left the gym because we did a two a day came back he was still at the gym and <laughs> like literally still at the gym and then when we were done working out again he went to the weight room and mm -hmm. literally in one day i don't know how much work he got out in that day but i want to i want to say he got in at least four workouts that day and it's no to no surprise that and i met him i first met him when he was in ninth grade um and so it's to no surprise that when you put that type of work in you get kentucky you get what I'm saying? Like you get schools like that. Um, and and that really just comes with a level of focus. Like you have to be focused and locked in in order to get to where you want to go. Like you have to. And I'll even give you Ahmad Noel. I know Ahmad, Ahmad Noel from a kid. Like we like he knows me. He calls me JP. He's one of the very few kids uh, people that calls me JP. Um he put the work in. You get what I'm saying? Like you gotta put the work in. And he doesn't care who he works out with. He's going to get his work in regardless. It don't matter if it's a baby or a three-year-old or a four- or five-year-old. If he's there, he's working out. And he takes every single workout serious, and you have to be. And I said, I'm attesting to this once again, not because he's he's a top uh, 30 in the country, but because I actually work with him, not because he's top 30 in the country. Right. Okay. So 
Um, let's get to this question. Um, if you could talk to old Pierre, um, what would right. you tell him? Like, what were some things you would tell your your younger self, knowing what you know now that you didn't know back then? Like, what are some things you would tell yourself? Um, one of the biggest things I would probably tell myself is just to be patient. You know, and every um, all great things come to people who who can wait it out. You know, I think that that was the biggest thing. I think I was so in a rush to go to a four year university. And I could have really just took my time and, and used my developmental years to get better. And I probably would have made it further than I, than I made it with basketball. So I would definitely say, um, you know, take your time, be patient, and understand that it's a process when it comes to sports. And it's just a game at the end of the day, y'all. It's not like the end of life. <laughs> like, I think we treat it like that because people are coming from different circumstances. Some people are... Brody, you went out for a second, Brody. Uh, Wait, run it, run it back, bro. You went out for a second. I got bear with him. He in the fight. He's in the basement, I guess. Colleges. Wait, colleges. You run that back, bro. You you kind of went out. You went out. Run it back for us. What? What? what which part? What part did, uh, I, did you hear? I would say the last thirty seconds of what you just said. Just run it back. Uh, oh, my fault. So um, so what I was saying was basically um, just, you know, taking care in every moment that you have with, with the game and um, just being patient with your process because everybody's everybody's process is going to be different. Some kids are just some kids are just talented. Some kids just got it like that. Some kids are just going to go to the NBA because they already know. So I, I, I know a girl right now that I told her she was going to go D1 and she has every offer in the country. You know, and I told her that when she was probably in the sixth grade. You know, some kids just really got it like that. Like, I I, had, I met a kid that, um, shout out to Jalen Worley, plays at Florida State. I coached him in middle school. Got an opportunity to work out, like, work with him for a long time. And I, and we all knew he was going Division One. Like, we just knew. Some kids just, and I don't want kids to take no shade to it. Some kids are just like that. <laughs> like it's just you could just tell that they're gonna go. You, could, you just know. One thing you know? I will and say so, about that kid was I, I I watched him work out. He he he, like you know how some kids are talented and they just it, use the talent. Like he he actually right. he put the work he put the work in. Right, I, I can give him that. I go actually, with. what what we see on film is what he is in person, and that's what you got to be. You can't fake it. You, this Instagram stuff teaches kids how to be fake. You can't fake it. You can't. It ain't no highlight tape when that coach pull up on you and, and see what your jump shot really looked like, or see what that left hand really looked like. You know, so you gotta. You, it, the game don't lie. The basketball do not. One thing basketball don't do. Men lie. Women lie. Numbers don't. Basketball numbers don't, don't lie. <laughs> you know, if you, I'm already knowing. Numbers don't lie. You get what I'm saying? And so right. you, that's how that's how the game is. You know, so you guys got to really cherish it. And um, like I said, be patient with your process. You might be a four year college player. Everybody's not going to leave their first year. Everybody's not going to leave their freshman year. You might end up playing three years, four years of college basketball. It is what it is. You got to take what come along with it. You know, the one thing that I'll say that kids have going for themselves now that we didn't have. There are so many different pro leagues that you guys can play in now that that weren't right. available. Um, and I want to kill this this narrative of playing overseas. It's the best thing in the world. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not. So I think a lot of people rely on that. A lot of a lot of kids rely on. Okay, I'm not probably going to the NBA. I'm going to just go play overseas. It's not that, y'all. Like, I had an opportunity to play overseas. It's rugged. Mm-hmm. It's, it's sometimes you playing in a gymnast. You playing in a gymnast cold. <laughs> it has, like, you get what I'm saying? And you got to be able to perform every – I got off the plane. No lie. I got off the plane and had a game as soon as I got off the plane. And you got to produce. And if you don't produce, guess what they do? Send you home. <laughs> they wave you. This is, this is what they do to you. They wave you. Bye. See you later. You get what I'm saying? They send you a little check that they was gonna pay you, and that's it. You keep it pushing. Um, it's not playing that, overseas that, is that not the be best messed thing. Up. That gotta be messed up hearing a uh, foreign language that I'm telling you by. Adios. Yeah, they, they listen. <laughs> they don't. They, they don't care because at the end of the day, if you not what they what you look like on. Remember, you gotta remember playing overseas. They don't know you from nowhere. They know the film. That's the it. foreigner in a different country. Just like how people. 
they all they know is the film. They don't know you. They don't know who you are, where you come from, and nothing. They they saw what they saw on film, and if you come there and you're not what you what they saw on film, you out of there, and they are gonna find somebody else. That's how it go, you know. And so stop thinking that. Oh yeah, overseas is it? No, it's not. I want you guys to do uh, do me a favor. Uh, I went to Albright College my first year of college. Um, in my bio, I said what I would do in uh, five years. I said five years from now, where do you see yourself? Ten oh, years wait, from now, on, where do you see on, yourself? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I'm happy you just said that. <laughs> I right. was just I was just looking at that. Hold on a second. Right, I got I got to put it because I, I want to be raw. I want to keep it real with y'all so that y'all understand. Hold on, let me you know, don't up. don't set your standards. Don't set your standards so low, you know, like I sh I, I could have said so many other different things, you know, so, you know, don't don't think like, dang, like I just want to go overseas because if you set a low bar for yourself, you would never you will never try to achieve anything past that, you know, so make, make sure that when you guys, first of all, first of all, excuse the picture, first of all, I was on my, I was on my, brain. Right. excuse the picture, man, um, I mean, this is my little profile. So when you go, when you guys go to college, um, you'll get a profile and you get to put in there. And this this stuff goes on, on Google. It's there forever. It'll never change. Like my kids, one day if I have kids, um, they'll be able to go back and look at this stuff, you know. And um, you guys go in there. If you look, it says something about, about 10 years from now, I said right. playing basketball overseas. Right. Okay. Hold on. So I want y'all to see that. I'm, I'm some, so when I tell you guys, um, mistakes that I've made, I'm really, I'm, I'm not. I would never tell you guys a lie. These are things that I, I made the same mistakes, and so I'm trying to tell you guys now. You know, don't make that same mistake that I made. Now, I will say this. Um, my, I, as far as achieving my goal, I did that. So, so for me, making it to the NBA was whatever. But I was able to achieve playing overseas hold on, hold on, hold on. So, and being able to play against professional hey, teams. So, your favorite yeah. restaurant was Olive Garden. Olive Garden, yeah. We Wait, you the, saw what they put? Mac Mills? Mac, yeah, who is Mac Mills? Meek Mills. They 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 had a typo. It was Meek. So wait, Mills. how long ago was this? Let's, 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 all right, so this 2010, this was, 2011, That's what. Uh, 2010, 2011. That's eleven. About twelve, what, 12 years, ago. years ago. Yeah, about twelve, 12 years, years ago. ago. Twelve years you ago, know? my man was listening to Mac Mills, Trey Songs, Chris Brown, and Wiz Khalifa, and he and got I Wiz still Khalifa listen to from me. He got Wiz Khalifa, and I got Wiz Khalifa. And I got Wiz Khalifa from you. Yep. In 10 years, I hope I am not jobless. You are not jobless. You are doing very good. I'm not yourself. jobless. <laughs> I'm Chad, doing we very gonna, well. We're going to give him his flowers while he's in here. He's doing real good for himself. He works in a school district. He uh, he trains kids. Um, dedicates a lot of time to that. So, uh, you know, we got to give people their flowers while they're still here. Um, yeah. okay, let's get Let's get this off the screen because you are ugly. <laughs> the beard, the, what, what the, the lady the Suni, say, the beard saved the you. Ain't come, yeah, <laughs> they say, it definitely they saved you, man. Cause they say, the, yo, the beard saved you. Yeah, yeah, the beard definitely did. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out when I'm gonna get mine. And when is when my beard yeah, gonna come it, in? My shit is never gonna grow. <laughs> in. It's cool though. I got I got long hair. Uh, so, but some of some of the things that I'm looking. For, uh, your year to grow faster than mine. You see, mine been this way for a whole year. Yeah, same know, life. <laughs> same like cartoon character. But uh, uh -huh. some of the things, some things I'm looking forward to as far as moving forward, man. Like I can't. I'm excited for high school basketball to start back up. Um, I know that me and um me and Claude slash Underground Media, uh, we'll be doing stuff every week as far as putting out um content and um picks of the week, um stuff like that, just to get the uh, high school basketball scene buzzing. Um, and, and guess what? We'll be also showcasing the public league. We're not just doing a Catholic league and interact league. Um, I want to show love to the public league because I'm a product of the yeah, public we, school we, environment. We so, are products uh, of the this public This is not league. just about. Yeah. And this is so this is not I want to show all the kids love, not just uh, the kids that um, everybody knows is going somewhere. Um, there are a lot of kids that are in the public league that don't get enough recognition or or enough exposure, and so we want to make sure that we are highlighting um, not just kids that we see on a on the scene every, you know, on those um, different footages and stuff like that, but just all kids across the board because that's what it's about, you know, regardless of what school you go to. Because I think a lot of times everyone goes based off of the school and not the kid, and you know that's not fair to a kid that could be doing really well at um at a public school. So 
Um, we want to make sure that we're, you know, I'm look, I'm really looking forward to doing that and popping out to some of the games and stuff like some of the, to show some love to the uh, public league and everything. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's um right around the corner, man. We'll be right back to that. Um, you know, out of time, time is flying. We already about to be in July already. So uh, make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Um, do we got any questions from the chat? Last call. Any questions from the chat that you want to ask Pierre before we let him go and get by his day? Any questions? Y'all got about 30 seconds. A long day, bro. Yeah, well, so, so, so tell them what you where you coming from. You keep coming from uh, Brotherly Love Pro Am. Tell them how that went. So I was, yeah. So uh, Trez Harrell played on our team today. Um, Jordan Hall from Newman Garetti. Um, he's getting ready for uh, Vegas Summer League. He played on our team. DJ Newville, a um, couple other guys as well. Uh, the young, as far as the young crowd, uh, the kids know Scar. So Scar is on our team. Hmm. Um. Uh, we are uh, Leaf White. Shout out to Leaf White. Um, quick story on him. When I first started playing, he was the first guard I saw that was really like straight up dominant. Uh, Leaf White from Temple. He killed in the um, Sweet 16. Um, his years of playing college basketball. He's re- he's retired now, but um, when he was playing, he was definitely he was tough. He was that era of um, new big guards. So I shout out to him as well. Um, but yeah, so we came to the Brother Love Pro Am. Uh, Trez Harrell got hurt. Um, we don't know how severe his injury is, but that's another part of the game that you got to be willing to, you know, take along with it when you're playing in these summer leagues and stuff like that. So that's another thing to look out that's for. So, so, since we don't have any questions, or I'll, I'll ask you some questions, I'll, I'll ask you like three more questions. Uh, so how important is uh, stretching, um, recovery, and stuff like that? Like, you know. Cause your body, like just like you said earlier, your body's like a, a vehicle. You got you got to keep it fine and tuned for it to for it to work long for as long as you want it to, basically. So, how important is stretching so, uh, and stuff like that? So we call it on a on a more of a sophisticated scale. Pre work, um, your workout itself, and post work. Post work is after things you do after. Um, you work out. Pre work is the stuff you do before you work out. So warming up your body, uh, dynamic warm ups before you stretch. The kids, don't go in the gym and just start doing static stretching, which is um, I'm gonna give you guys a, uh, one static stretch. Sit down and touch your toes. That's a static stretch. The first thing you should be doing to warm your body up: high knees, lunges, butt kicks, squats, um, jumping jacks. Simple stuff that gets your body moving. Um. When basketball players, we use every muscle in our body. And so you can't just warm up one area and not warm up the other. Stretching your arm. Um, that's pre work. Um, doing your workout, staying hydrated, make sure you're drinking a lot of water, not just Gatorade. Uh, there's this thing where um, Gatorade became a thing a long time ago where they were selling a drink, which they still do, um, obviously. Um, but Kids think that it's more important to drink Gatorade because it says that it gives you electrolytes. Mm-hmm. When really, you can get more electrolytes from that. Uh, what's that drink that they have for the kids? Um, I can't think of it. It's um, it's for the kids. So I can't think of it. But they give it to babies. Um, oh, and, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you're not talking about you know, Pedialyte. Talk right? about Pedialyte, yep. Pedialyte. You, can get more, you can get more out of drinking Pedialyte than you can drink Gatorade. So coconut water is good for you. You can drink coconut water. That'll keep you hydrated. Um, and like I said, water itself. Just drink a lot of water. I drink a gallon of water a day. I mean, I, and I'm not chasing nothing. I just train kids and go about my day. You know, So definitely you want to be doing that. And as far as post-work, static stretching, ice baths, sauna, hot tub. Uh, you guys got so many different tools. Massage gun. Um, what's the thing? I have it in the crib, too. The the sleeves, what's that thing called? About the stems? Norma, Norma Tech, right? The Norma Tech. Um, stems. Get make sure that you are recovering your body. If you if you wake up and you don't feel and your body feels like trash, you're not gonna perform. Right. If you wake up and your body feels fresh, you're gonna be more willing to do more work. 
you're not going to be willing to put in a lot of work if your body feels like trash. If I'm sitting here telling you you should be working out three times a day, then that means after every single workout, you should be stretching. Not just one workout and then the other workouts you didn't stretch because then your body is going to hurt the next day. That's just a natural thing. Your body's Now, the difference is I'm 31. If I go hoop today and I don't stretch, I'm going to feel it for like a week or two. Now, that's kids, you might, you might feel it for a day or two, but that's going to stop you from wanting to put in extra work because your body doesn't allow you to. So make sure that you guys are getting your pre-work in as far as um, doing your dynamic warm-ups. Um, make sure that during your workouts you're staying hydrated and then also your post-work. Make sure that you guys are stretching. Make sure that you're um, doing some type of recovery. Ice bath, um, sauna, heat. Um, hot tub, whatever you got to do. Um, you guys have a lot of different avenues that you guys can go down. So make sure that you guys are doing that. Right. Okay. So second question. Um, how important is non-basketball workouts compared to actual, you know, basketball workouts? Like, you know, like ladder, um, weight room, and, right. you know, like just cardio. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. how important is those type of things? So from from being a trainer – um, the first thing that I find that um, the first thing I want to see as a trainer, everybody has something um, their own thing that they want to see. But for me, the first thing I want to see, I want to see if a kid can play at, at their at his or her highest level when they're tired. And so, if you're not tired, I can't give you a good. I can't give a parent a good assessment of what you can be if you're not. If I can't see you play when you're tired, because Kids, like I said, when you're fresh legs, you're dunking in the layup lines and you're doing all that. But when you get tired, you can no longer do those things. So oh, yeah. cardio is one of the most important things. It's nothing to sprint. You need no equipment to sprint. You can go outside, sprint one block straight. And I'm going to give you guys scientific, some science behind this. Uh, average court is 94 feet, right? Let's talk about that's an NBA size court. If you're playing on a high school court, it's a little bit shorter than that. If you can sprint a court and a half, imagine what you can do on one full court. So when you're training, you got to train beyond your comfort zone. Will you be sprinting all basketball, the whole game? No, you will not be. But what you're preparing your body for is that when you do start to push the ball up the court, you got to play defense. <laughs> if you push the ball up the court and whether you make or miss the shot that – See, I'm, I'm, ha- the I'm, ball. I'm, I'm, I'm happy you said you that. You got to get back to So, that, so <laughs> that's transition. Like you have to. to my, it's not a trick. That's transition to my last and final question before I let you go. How yeah. important is playing defense on a basketball court? Like How important is it? it? If you don't play defense, you shouldn't be playing basketball. I don't care if you're the best shooter in the world. I don't care if you um, are the best ball handler in the world. If you do not play defense, don't even play basketball. Don't sign up for it. Just go, just play for fun. If you did, if you want to go take basketball serious, and if you're a kid, right, I'm gonna just put it like this, because I don't want to discourage anybody. If you're a kid and you don't bring effort to your training sessions or you don't bring effort to practice, and you can't guard someone in practice, how is your coach supposed to trust you to guard the best player in the country in a game, in a real game? How can I put you out there on the court with the best players in the world if you don't play defense? Think about that. How, how do you want a Division One scholarship and everybody's good in college? And I want to say this because there's this misconception that D3 players aren't good. Mm. And on, I want to say D3 players. I know D3 players that could play in the NBA. I've, I've seen it, and you guys can make whatever you want to make out of it. I've seen D3 players cook D1 play, Division One players. I've seen – Give, give me a division. Give me a D three player, just so I could be on the same page as you. Give me somebody, anybody. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you somebody from uh, from Philly. Um, I, I'll give you when when I was I'm just gonna go based off of when I was playing. So uh, Mark Fifty, okay. I've seen him cook. I've seen him cook Division one guys. Shout out to you know what I'm saying? Shout right. Uh, um, I've seen Darnell Artis. He played at Gwinnett Mercy D three. Okay. Right, yeah. Cook. I've seen him cook Division One guys. 
I've seen, I've seen, I've seen a good, uh, even Tyreek Peoples that he coaches now, he played at Immaculata. He was a small guard. I've seen him cook, cook a Division One guy. So, you know that this this misconception that um, oh, D three guys aren't good or or I can't go. I'm not going D three. No, sometimes the D three program might be the best thing for you. Sometimes you, if you try to go D one, you go. All right, put it this way. Some of the best guards that I see going Division One end up in the portal. Let's talk about it. You get what I'm saying? Before before we like, get out of here, let's t- t- talk about the portal. Let's talk about how how has the portal impacted um, basketball recruiting, uh, college wise, high school wise? Like how has it impacted uh, recruitment wise? Uh, so so portal? so what was happening um, before the portal even started? What was happening was kids were actually going to college. To win a college championship, kids were not like like if you were good enough to go to into the NBA out of high school, that's what you did. And there were very few of guys that went to the NBA straight out of high school. If you were a, if you were a guy and you wanted to play college or a girl and you wanted to play college basketball, you were staying for four years or at least three. You get what I'm saying? One of the the greatest player in the world, which is Michael Jordan. I mean, I'm gonna take it away from nobody. If you like LeBron, you like LeBron, but to me it's Michael Jordan, right? Went to college for three years. So what makes a lot of kids think that they only need one year of college? You know? Like now, there are a, now I said, there are a select few guys that are, are NBA ready when they come out of high school. There are a select few guys that are uh, NBA ready after their first year of college. But there's a so, very small percent. That's a very small percentage. How about all the rest? So, of them? so what I'm so what I was referring to was basically um, the recruitment process now with how oh high yeah schools, yeah so, well, so well, how so, high schoolers are recruited now. You know they they not even right. looking at high school now anymore. They look so, at so the now right, so so I'm gonna put it like this: a college coach rather get a JUCO a kid from JUCO or get a kid mm-hmm. straight out of the portal that was. A kid that went to I'm gonna give y'all I'm just giving y'all random schools so this is not no shade on any kid from any other school. Mm-hmm. A kid that went division low D one I'm gonna give you uh, just Sienna right low D one mid major type school. Um, a school that that's like Oklahoma State rather take a kid from Sienna than take a kid fresh out of high school. That's that's how much it's impacted high school basketball. So if you're a kid that you're you're being recruited so kids get an offer right. There, there are a few kids that got offered from Philly Live period um, over the last over the last couple of weekends. Yes, they offered you, but think about it. You can't go to college right now. You can't go to college for till your next three or four years. At some point, they're gonna come across another kid that's better than you, bigger than you, stronger than you, and that offer is no longer gonna exist. So just because you get an offer, that doesn't mean that you can stop working, or it doesn't mean that you're locked in because you have not committed. That's why they do these commitments. Now, if you're a kid and you get a and you get an offer, you better commit <laughs> because in three years from now, that offer may not stand anymore. So it feels good to get an offer, but I mean, it, it, you it know, may not stand for many reasons. Though a coach could lose his job, yeah, they could it, find yeah, it, it, and that's, and I was about to and I was about to get there. I was actually about to get there when I got when I got to Albright College. Um, the coach. Uh, we had they were just fresh off of it, uh, playing in the national championship and all that stuff. That situation didn't work out. I got recruited by another school, Rosemont College. That coach, uh, school started August 24th. That coach called me August 17th and told me that he was taking a different job somewhere else. Mm. Now, the coach so that I, 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 before you go further, I mean, I could agree uh-huh. to the same thing. The, the coach that the coach that recruited me, Coach Archer, shout out to Coach Archer. Um, he spent one year with me, then he wound up going to Norfolk, and then my uh, sophomore mm-hmm. year was kind of like hell, but uh, you know we made it work. But um, that that's that's a real big thing. Like you can't you can't just base it off of I'm recruited here, this person going to be here forever. It's a business, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And, and and not just people are getting fired, but people are elevating, people are moving up. They not just staying in one place. So yeah, but go ahead. Go and ahead, so continue. I end up so so the coach that. Re- recruited me to do to be the point guard that he wanted me to be i ended up getting a coach that wanted a completely different point guard right so it's like went from went from knowing that i was going to be this guard and i was my my place was secured i was going to start and all that 
to basically having to turn my whole game around and to be something else and not having any time to really do it because this is your junior year, you know. And so, you know, coaches getting fired. There's so many different factors. And so that's why it leads me into what I said earlier. Um, you have to be willing to take everything that comes along with this basketball stuff, like, especially if you're not that guy. Like if you're that guy and coaches are clamoring for you and they're calling for you, then then you kind of have more of a leeway. You still It's still hard, but you have more resources. Yeah, if you're that guy that you're bottom of the barrel, middle of the barrel, and you're working hard, you got to work, man. And it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's not even about size. I've seen kids that are 5'8", five, 5'9", five, make it to go play somewhere. Like, it ain't – kids always make this excuse. Their parents try to make this excuse. Oh, my kid's too short. No. If your kid works hard enough, they can make it to be whatever they want to be, you know. And so don't ever – don't ever – Say, oh, well, I'm too short to play basketball. You're absolutely lying to yourself. And you're only saying that because you're not willing to work, put the work in that it takes to make it. That's all it is. Right. Right, man. So, man, hey, man, it was it was great. We had a great conversation. I feel like your story will help out a lot of kids. I feel like you dropped a lot of gems in this uh, podcast interview. Um, who is who is somebody? Because this, this is how I want to do it. I want I want to. Whoever I'm interviewing, I want them to recommend the next person, and that's who I'm going to interview next. So, <laughs> if you could, who is your recommendation for my next, my next interview? Oh, also, Chad, y'all are looking at my new co-host. We got to get his camera and stuff together, though. We can't, we can't be on the yeah, same. Yeah, no, no. But Listen, we, we but y'all see me? Right. I got the setup back here. Y'all see the? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So, 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 so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm, 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 I'm gonna tap in with Big Brody. I'm gonna go down there. I'm gonna f- get him right, fix the situation up, and his gonna yeah, look yeah. just like mine. And we gonna we gonna be rocking. Um, so yeah. give me somebody you want me to. It could be um, it could be somebody fresh out of high school, or it could be somebody that probably played around when you played or, or before. Uh-huh. So who who's somebody you would like to see on episode two? And I'm gonna tag him in in the next. Uh, I'll tag him in on on uh, Instagram as well. Uh, I I want everybody to hear um, Earl Brown's story mm. um, from mm. Hemotep or okay. or Eric Cope. Eric Copes or Earl Brown because I'm gonna just say one thing. A, we might have to do a duo. We might have to do a duo. Uh, right. Yeah. Duo. And I want to I want to say that because um, Earl Brown played on a team where all the starters were Division One, and he still went D one. Like that's right. crazy to me. Like he he didn't even start. He still went right. Division One, right. and he and he didn't average the most points on the team or anything like that. He he really played his role and did what he because like, that's missing in basketball now. Kids just playing their role. Like everybody's not going to be the man, you know. And so I think that his story is so like quintessential to to basketball and what it could be for a lot of kids. If you just play your role and do what you're supposed to do, you'll you'll make it. You just got to do what you're really good at doing. Is no different than um, Duncan Robinson. We know he's not he's not LeBron, you know, right. but he does his job well enough to get paid millions of dollars to shoot the ball really well and plays good enough defense to keep him out there on the court. You know, right. for the most part, these guys that are in the NBA, um, there's two guys that are that guy, you know, and now they try to do trios now. But for the most part, there's two guys as that guy. The rest of the guys are just pieces that can be moved and plugged in by different guys in the offseason. That's all it is, you know. And so they teach that early on in high school. That's something that I learned as I, um, you know, started to go through my trials and tribulations. And like I said, if I would have known that a little bit earlier, you know, who knows, you know. So right. that's right, definitely well, something I want to Away. Well, y'all, well, y'all heard it here first. The next guest we're gonna have is gonna be Earl Brown Jr. Or maybe uh, we might do a duo interview with Earl and uh, and uh, Copes, just to see their their perspective, their side of you know their basketball tells. But once again, man, it's been a pleasure, my big brother, my big brother, <laughs> brother. <laughs> Thank you guys for tapping in once again. If you guys are looking for some good training. PF, follow me on Instagram, PF Workouts. Even if you don't yeah, come PF and train workout. with me, um, just follow, you know, follow the workouts. You might, you might, I might post a workout that you might like, or I might post uh, somebody that you may know. So, you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be you working out specifically with me, but, you know, follow the page. Um, also follow What's Your Forte podcast as well. Um, we'll be doing some episodes and stuff as far as um, having different um, guys to come on the show and talk about their journey. Um, and obviously, me and my brother will be doing. 
a lot of different coverage on tri-state basketball and stuff so make sure that All you guys that coming soon. we'll even we'll even um you know I, I got a lot of football guys as well too so yeah, um, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. probably even try to try to get some stuff going for the for you football guys as well yeah um, and i'm and i'm a football listen, i'm football at heart so i want everybody to know that like uh, a football player was able to make it to play college basketball so it, for any of you kids out there that you think you can't do it you can do it you just gotta put the work in and, and do what you're supposed to do absolutely get your workouts in three absolutely, three man. three a day four if you can don't forget that three a day Four, if you can, y'all heard that here first, man. It's your host, Claude Forte, aka Mr. Indie Grind Media, the Wizard. You know what I'm saying? We'll be back episode two real soon. I don't have specific dates that I want to do. I just want to do it like pop up surprise interviews and stuff like that. Um, if you just now getting into the chat, uh, you probably won't be able to see the the full interview unless you subscribe. So I will be adding this to YouTube. It will be on the the Indie Grind Media YouTube page. If you want to go in, check out, hear what Pierre said, some some of the gems he dropped. And man, listen, we'll we'll be back soon, man. I might be streaming again in like ten minutes. I might get on Call of Duty. So if anybody want to catch some wreck, let me know. I'm here. All right, man. All right, man. Tapping off. See you later. See y'all later, y'all. Appreciate it. All right, bro. See you.